start off our first lesson, I'd like to start by introducing the TU9240 trainer and describing some of the panels that we are using in the circuits in the different lessons. There's 36 panels that come standard with the trainers. Some of the panels, you get multiple panels of the exact same component, which are all listed on the manual that are provided online. To begin with, I'd like to talk about the transformer panel, which is your main hub for the entire trainer. Without this panel active, you really can't do a whole lot with the rest of the panel. So this is the most critical important. It also serves as a very important safety factor because it has a couple different safety features built into it. So we have our 120 volt power supply with a three prong wire, that standard outlet that comes wired into a SSU switch that's got a 15 amp fuse on it. From that fuse switch comes over to the transformer, which has a five amp circuit breaker that's on the outgoing portion of that uh, circuit to the rest of the panel. So this steps our high voltage 120 volt incoming power source down to a safe 24 volt power source, definitely making it a safer experience for you. Moving on to the different other different components, we have start stop stations, we have light bulbs. Light bulbs are a really great panel to work with because they simulate loads. We can use a light bulb and simulate a burner coming on or a, a pump coming on, you know, could be just by the light bulb lighting up. So that kind of indicates our, our load happening. We have different controls for that we can implement into our circuits. Thermostats, for example, we have two different types of residential style or commercial light commercial style thermostats that you would find. We have a refrigeration, mechanical refrigeration, electronic refrigeration control thermostats. We have two wire uh, automatic reset pressure switches, refrigeration pressure switches, and then we have the more advanced commercial grade uh, manual reset, low and pressure, low and high pressure safety switches. So these safety switches can be incorporated in and they can be bugged as well to create different scenarios. Scenarios that we find out in the real world, but we've you can use them to bug them and uh, create troubleshooting lessons with. Moving on to the next panel, here we have a row of different types of relays that we use. Some are simple up to a little bit more complex just to add more circuits within our diagrams. We have a liquid line solenoid that can be used to build a refrigeration pump down circuit, which we'll talk about a little bit later. We have different types of time delay relays, time delay switches, a compressor, different contactors that we use. Some that have overloads on them, some with auxiliaries on them, and some that are just real basic and simple with uh, we have another load panel here. Again, just like the light bulbs, this load panel can be used to incorporate or to simulate different types of loads that are being turned on or turned off. We have a different row of different, two different style of fans that come with theirs. So this is meant to be an indoor fan or an outdoor fan. So like an evaporator fan motor or a condenser fan motor. We have, and then we have different setups of different types of switches everywhere from a single pole, single throw switch all the way up to a double pole, double throw four way switch. So different types of switching actions that can occur to uh, create different scenarios for our loads. One thing that's important to know when you're, we're wiring these trainers and we're creating different circuits is there's two different options for actually putting the wires onto the panels. We have the banana clips and we have the direct wire via the terminal strips. So the banana clips literally are just a clip that are going to plug into one of the terminals. Okay, so that's one style. The second style is a direct wire. So you have these, you have the other end of the wire that's kind of has a uh, terminal end on it. These are just on the terminal strips. These little flat blade thermostat screwdriver. Terminal fits inside there, tightens right up. In this next lesson, I wanted to build a simple circuit with a couple of light bulbs to simulate different loads. Uh, this is something that would be more for an introduction class, newer students that, that just want to learn the basic concepts of how to wire. This is a series circuit, so as we know from other instruction that you have to, you know, one complete path from point A to point B um, is what creates the, the, the circuit so it will operate properly. So, like we had talked about in the previous video, your transformer panel is your power supply. Uh, so we start off here on the 24 volt hot side. We come down through our single pole, single throw switch, out of our switch in series to two different light bulbs, through the light bulbs, back to the transformer. So if everything's wired correctly, our power is on, our fuses are good, circuit brackets are not uh, tripped. Uh, as soon as we flip the switch, circuit completes and the light bulbs come on. So this would simulate a 
two light bulb in series, simple circuit. In this lesson, we're gonna, we have, this is series circuit number three. We're gonna, we add a few more components into the mix. We're still going to use a light bulb as a load. However, we're gonna add a few safety switches in series so we can see what they do. This also uses a refrigeration temperature control to, you can adjust this to act like a thermostat to turn your circuit on and off. Um, even though we have the single pole, single throw switch that we're still using here. Um, one thing that we want to mention here, uh, some of the components have a bug switch on the back of them, which allows us to turn the circuit off. So it's going to act like there's a problem with the circuit somehow. Uh, so it kind of acts as like a troubleshooting. So the high pressure switch, the low pressure switch, the commercial grades have this uh, button on the back of them here that as you toggle that switch, it, it opens the circuit up so that way it trips trips the uh, component out. So like I said, so starting off here, we, we're gonna start off here with the uh, transformer panel. We got with the SSU, the power supply coming in, transformers down to 24 volts. It's ran through our single pole, single throw switch. The switch is wired then, directly wired. So we're gonna go from our banana plug here over to the uh, actual um, terminal strip, direct wire terminal strip. Cause this, so you, the wires that come with the panels you know, you have different wire options here. So we're gonna start off with the plug and play banana clips here and transition over to uh, the direct wire on the temperature control switch. Coming out of here, going over to our, down to our time delay switch, through our time delay switch, through both of our uh, pressure switches, which at any point we can trip the switch on the back like we had talked about. Um, through the switches back up to the contactor coil and then from the contactor coil back over to here Now I have a second circuit ran on this. So the circuits kind of a two-part circuit So I have a second part of this circuit that you're taking another power supply You're going through the actual contacts the open contacts on the contactor Which then is powering your light bulb and back so this is a control and a load circuit kind of combined into one so the first set that we talked about would be your control circuit so any of the you know, this kind of simulates a um, equipment out in the field that has, you know, multiple safeties in play. So they're going to make or break the circuit that's allowing the contact, which is carrying the load voltage to our light bulb. It'll, it'll turn that off in the case, in the event of a, you know, high pressure event or a low pressure event. Uh, and then our time delay obviously is used for, to prevent short cycling. So in this case, we would turn this on. Nothing happens at first because we're waiting for the time delay. There it goes. Time delay finishes, your, all your rest of your circuits are, your components are closed, contactor pulls in, that second circuit then is allowed to have a complete path from the transformer through the contacts, through your light bulb back to your common. Now, like I said, on the back side of these safeties, we have this switch back here, this toggle switch. So if I'm an instructor and I'm teaching a class, you know, and I want to, create a, an additional lesson for my students, I can reach behind here and I can turn that switch off. And then, you know, now they have to use a meter and come in behind and start following the path, following the circuit to find out, okay, which one of these switches, which one of these components is open, preventing my contactor from pulling in like it's supposed to. They find the right, you know, they tell me, oh, it's the high pressure switch. Turn that back on, circuit is re-energized. Okay, in this lesson, we're gonna use a three-way single pole double throw switch to create two parallel or parallel circuit between four light bulbs. So in one direction, we have the power supply coming from the transformer through our switch that's gonna energize these two light bulbs. The other direction of the switch, we're gonna energize the top two and these two will go back off. So it's pretty simple, but it, it helps illustrate the different functions that the single pole double throw switch can produce. So when I, as soon as I turn this power supply on, our, our row of top bulbs are on. That's because in the downward position of the switch, our power supply comes from our transformer to our common on our switch, out of the switch to the this um, path down here and the, the downward path, comes up to the light bulbs, back to our common. As soon as we flip the switch to the other direction, these, these light bulbs turn off. 
the bottom light bulbs are energized because now the path coming from our common up this direction through our light bulbs back to our transformer. So it's a simple switching action that a single pole double throw switch can produce. In this lesson, we're going to wire, have a combination of control circuits and load circuits. The loads are going to be four light bulbs, two sets that are wired in parallel. And we'll demonstrate that by you know, bugging one of the light bulbs and seeing how only two of the light bulbs turn off instead of all four. That's because they're wired in parallel. Well, we're also going to use a control circuit here to control our contactor coil um, in the event of a lower high pressure scenario. Again, we can use the um, bug switches on the back of these controllers to create a, a bug scenario for a troubleshooting lesson. So as we start off at the beginning of the lesson here, we're wired from our transformer, 24 volt supply, through our single pole single throw switch. When the switch closes, power is gonna be transferred to our low pressure switch through our, to our high pressure safety. From our high pressure safety through our contactor coil from our contactor coil back to the common side of the transformer. That's our control circuit. Our load circuit is gonna be wired from the transformer to L1 on the contactor. Through the normally open contacts, you're gonna be, you have two sets of banana clip plugs here, two circuits. One's wired to the first set of light bulbs. The second is wired to the second set of light bulbs. These, each light bulb set is wired, you have series between the two, but then you have par parallel between the two circuits. So as we turn this on, all four light bulbs come on right away. Our switches and everything have made. So we know that parallel circuits has more than one path back from our supply back to our common. So if we were to unscrew one, we're only opening the path of flow back to the transformer on one circuit. Our top circuit still remains the same. However, if we were to lose the control circuit, which would turn off our contactor, by bugging the high pressure switch, everything shuts off. So we could, you know, set this up for a student and have them have everything turned on. And you could almost do two parts here. You could unwire one of these, turn off this here. Now you have two problems that they have to be able to locate with using a meter and find. So let's find our high pressure issue first. We turn that back on. Okay, all right, good. We have two out of the four light bulbs. Now we have to go further on and figure out why. So we trace it back and find out that that other light bulb was, was tripped. This is Control Circuits lesson number two. In this lesson, we're gonna be using a single pole double throw three-way switch to manipulate the coil on the double pole double throw relay. It's going to control the uh, action of several different loads using the light, three of the light bulbs and then the load panel over here. Um, we'll see that we have one light bulb wired in parallel with the coil on the relay to, in, to give us an indication of when the relay is actually working. So uh, we've come out of our transformer, go down to our common port on our single pole double throw switch. Um, in the up position, we're wired over to the coil of the double pole double throw relay, also in parallel with the first light bulb from there back to our common side of our transformer. The other direction of the single pole double throw switch is wired simply to a light bulb for it to simulate a load. Coming off of the 24 volt side of the transformer, we're hardwired over to the common terminals on the double pole double throw relay. So that would be terminal number one down here in the bottom and number four down here in the bottom. Those are our common terminals. So we're common because they're common to two different directions. Either they normally open set of contacts or they normally close set of contacts. And since this is a double pole, double throw relay, we have two sets of that. So we're wired directly from our power supply, directly to the common terminal on both the um, common on the relay. The normally closed switch, um, which or the normally closed terminal, which would be number two and number five are both wired to loads number one and three over here on our load panel. From there they go, they re your power supply returns back to the common side. Um, the normally open sides are one is wired to load number two, and the other is wired to a light bulb. So we have two more sets of light of uh, loads that are wired in parallel. 
So when we energize this, we'll notice that the lights are come on right away. So we have load one and load three lit up here on the panel and our first light bulb. We know this is in the upward position and we do not hear the click of the coil on the relay. As soon as we switch our three-way switch, you can hear the click on the coil indicating that the contacts change state. Two light bulbs come on. Our first light bulb over here turned off. Loads one and three turned off and load two energized. So as we switch back and forth, we can see the switching action happening between the contacts here and the loads here and the loads up here. This is a refrigeration pump down circuit that uses a electronic temperature control module to control the action of a liquid line solenoid valve. The liquid line solenoid valve will change the pressures inside the system, controlling the action of the low pressure safety switch, which turns the coil of the contactor for the compressor on and off during operation. So we can, a lot of things we have going on here, we use a contactor with overload safety protection to power our compressor. We use a second contactor here to power our evaporator fan motor. We have a low pressure safety switch that we're going to use to simulate a fan cycling switch. So we have some sort of low ambient control uh, for our pressures. Uh, we all know that most refrigeration units run 24 seven. So these have to help us provide some sort of pressure protection by changing what will happen with our fan motor. Uh, we have a light bulb here that we're gonna use. It's gonna simulate another low ambient safety is a, a crankcase heater. So we have this connected to our auxiliary contacts on our compressor. So as our compressor contactor pulls in, that's gonna shut off and reverse roll. When the compressor is not running, the heater will come on and keep the protection, you know, keep the uh, compressor warm. Uh, we also using a time delay relay to prevent short cycling of the compressor. So as we turn this on, we're gonna have the fans are gonna come right on and then we're going to have a call for cooling right away. You'll notice that there'll be a, a delay in time as the time delay counts down before our crankcase heater shuts off, our compressor comes back on. So now we're waiting for the time delay. Time delay makes solenoid. And there we go. After the time delay, our compressor comes on, our crankcase heater turns off, and our compressor is operational right now. So our compressor is going to continue to operate until our electronic temperature control module is satisfied. The box temp comes down to a set point, which you can customize this to whatever set point you would want. So you, cut, you set this down, it comes down to a set point. And to simulate that going to set point, we can come over behind here and trip the switch. That's the bug switch on the back of that sw safety switch. That's gonna act as if the switch is opening because that should turned off. So now we're back to compressors not running, crankcase heaters on, fans are still operational. As the box tap begins to rise, we have another call for cooling. Same thing happens just in reverse order now. We can come back here, switch our switch. We're gonna wait for the time delay. Time delays off, crankcase heater comes off, compressor starts, we're cooling again. What's really nice about this feature is that we have multiple bug switches that we can use here to trip out several different things at once. So if we wanna turn this into a really great troubleshooting lesson, there's a lot we can do here by switching out, bugging out our contactors, changing out how our uh, power feeds going to things, endless possibilities really. So that is our refrigeration pump down circuit.